topology of an automotive seat pan. We already have a linear static solution created with constraints and loads as you see here as well as a solution. We'll take a look at the results. Here we can see that the maximum displacement occurs at node 7459. We're going to use that in just a bit in our optimization. And you can see that it's a little under three tenths of a millimeter for the maximum displacement. We'll begin by creating our optimization, topology optimization solution and we'll specify the topology optimization parameters. Here we'll specify the maximum number of design cycles. We'll bring in our constraints and forces from our linear static solution into our topology optimization solution by dragging Now we'll, we'll define our design objective, which is to minimize compliance. We'll give it a name. Next we'll specify our design area. Here we want to define the elements that we do not want to participate in our topology optimization. We'll call these frozen elements. and we'll specify a frozen area. Now here I have already defined a group of these frozen elements to simplify the selection. All we need to do is give it a label next we'll create a design constraint to specify a range for the total weight Next we'll specify a design constraint. Which will limit the displacement at our node that we determined we had a maximum displacement from our linear static analysis earlier. So we'll go ahead and type in that node number and put in our limits for displacement. All right, at this point, we're ready to run the simulation. And this just takes a, a minute or two to run, but to uh, accelerate this, I'll be pausing the video. But in the bottom right-hand corner of the solution monitor, you can see the total elapsed time. Now that we have our results for our topology optimization, we'll go ahead and take a look at the results uh, specifically for the normalized mass density. To get a better look at what our new topology looks like. Uh, what we'll do is we'll limit the legend results to start at 0 0.08 and go to 1 and we'll clip anything below 0 0.08 so that means we'll remove any elements that have a result below that. To smooth it out we'll go ahead and use nodal averaging and we'll also just display our feature curves on the, on the uh, edges. This will help us when we write out our JT file, which we're doing right now, in order to then bring 
those edge curves in to edit our original CAD part. So here we have our JT part opened in modeling and you can see those edge curves as well as as well as the facet body. We'll go ahead and save that JT and then we can use that saved JT to import into our CAD part. All right, so that imported not only the facet body, but the curves. We don't need the facet body, so I'll go ahead and hide that. Now we can use the curves to trim our CAD part. Now these curves consist uh, of small line segments that were written out from our element edges. So we'll use those to trim. Here I'll go ahead and box select those curves. All right, and there you can see we've modified our original CAD part. If we would rather make a smoother cutout, we could easily use those uh, original element edge curves as a guide in order to create a smoother curve such as with curve on surface. But taking this update we can then go back to our finite element model and see that a, an update is pending. We'll go ahead and update our finite element model to conform to our CAD change. At this point we can go ahead and solve and confirm that our part meets our performance requirements. And that concludes the demonstration.